Hi everybody, I'm Bill Sanders and this is Watch Art Sci, the art and science of Watts Collection. Uh, today is the first day, it's just, I, I may appear in different outfits because uh, this is really taking a, about a week to make this video on how to make a watch. Now, the actual amount of time that it may take, well, let's say a talented watchmaker to make a watch, it, it might be as little as an hour, perhaps even less. But I am not a talented watchmaker, a pretentious watchmaker maybe, but that's it. So I'm going to take my time um, for a number of reasons. One, I want to, I'm going to be making videos of it and I have to edit those and get everything just right. And also, um, because it's something as part of a hobby, as sort of expanded watch collection hobby, making our own watches, it's something that I, I sort of enjoy. The other part of it is why I like sort of taking it slow, beside the fact that if you make a certain types of mistake, it's game over. So that's, that's another important aspect of it. But also is that it is it takes a great deal of concentration i mean if it's not one of those things that you can sort of multitask with you're doing one thing and you need to do it in a certain way at a certain level and if you miss a step or you have to repeat it it can make the watch not be the kind of watch you'd like to have or i make a watch put one together this is the third one I've made, which means that it's not like <laughs> some big chest of watches I've made. Uh, but still, what I like to do, I like to put it into a time grapher. Now, I have two types of time grapher. One is sort of a, a quick and dirty one, I'll call it that, where I use what's called the uh, Frederick Constant Analyzer, and it, it gets the information I need. All I have to do is clip it on this clip, plug it into my iPhone, and Bob's your uncle. That's it. And what I came up with was the average uh, on this, on the, on the uh, ETA's 6497, was, um, was off a bit. Uh, it was off by... 11.2 uh, seconds a day. It was fast, 11.2 seconds. And um, the the rate of excellence is plus or minus uh, 7 seconds a day. And acceptable is plus or minus 20 seconds a day. And uh, what I like to do when I'm first starting uh, to work with the watch is try, is try to get it under 1 second a day. And um, the reason I like doing it before I put the movement into the case, uh, there are these, as you'll see when we do it, there's little plastic cases and you can uh, put those in the time grapher and use them just as well as you have a regular watch case. And then you take off the top and you move the uh, regulator a little and then you have to put it back on again, do another time grapher until you get it just right. I mean. If you're very lucky, you can go, you can get it on the first time. You can, because there's this little pointer that you move. And when you move that, that'll make it faster or slower. So that's the first thing we're going to do. Uh, and then on subsequent pieces here, this is all going to be all at once. But uh, I'm going to put the whole watch together. Okay, so let's get started. Take a look at uh, how to use the uh, regulator. Okay, uh, we know that the speed is too fast, and so we want to slow it down. What you want to do in your non-dominant hand, the one you're going to hold it with or do something with it with, you want to put on these finger cots. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the uh, toothpick. And this toothpick that I have, it's got a, a flat end, and then it's got a pointed in. And what I want to do is that here's the regulator uh, pointer right here. And I just want to push it this way to the left a little to slow it down. Uh, I looked at the other ones and they had the plus here and the minus here. Now I want to slow it down, so I want to push it this way just a little. So I'm going to put on my loop and 
so I can see this. I use about a 4x loop uh, for this, 4 or 5x loop. And here, and then I want to push this. There. That's all. And uh, now what I'll do, I'll put it back on the time grapher and see what I got. So I'm going to go do that now. Well, I put it on the time grapher, and uh, I, if and that, just that little push that I had, I went from <clears throat> plus 11 <clears throat> to minus 17. So I pushed it too far, so now I'm going to push it back. By the way, notice that I, uh, I turn the uh, movement around, again, using my dominant hand, I'm going to very gently push it the other way now. I want to just fasten it up very slightly. So put that here and just... Uh, probably too much. Let me see. There. Let's see if that works. Got to put the... Uh, remember, you have to always put the top back on before you put it in the time grapher. And I'm going to use my... Uh, my little Frederick Constant analyzer here, so this will be, this sort of moves things along a little quicker. Uh, so I'm going to put this on and have the results in no time. Okay, well, uh, we got the adjustment done and uh, it came up with minus 0 0.7. That's, that's an average. Uh, which is less than one second. And when you look at the uh, uh, the amount of error that is considered excellent, uh, we're running at uh, plus or minus seven seconds, not seven tenths of a second. So we've got it down to uh, less than a second. So this is this is one of the things I really like about watchmaking because you know when you put put stuff together like this, um, you can really <laughs> <laughs> do things with it. Um, it, it. I'm going to on the Sunday's video. We're gonna then we'll go into putting on a dial and everything else. I was hoping to have it all together, but the um, the, the videos, it, these really long videos, and somebody wants to you know check out adjustment and they're not faced with a big half hour uh, video with just a little part of it. Uh, being about adjustment. Okay, so uh, on Sunday we'll have the uh, putting everything together. Now, uh, let me say something before we go on, or before we end this segment, actually. Don't do this on good watches. Just don't. Uh, there's, um, I, right now I'm, I've got on my uh, FP Jorn, what's it called? FP Jorn Re Resonance. Okay, I would no more. I don't know. I won't even open the case, let alone try to mess with it. Don't do that on your really good watches because if you mess something up, it's going to cost you a lot of money. Uh, what this is for, this is one of the things you got a hundred dollar watch, uh, because you put it together, <laughs> you put together a five thousand dollar watch for a hundred bucks. Um, you know, and then it's got a big pointer there to move, and uh, that's not rocket science, okay? Uh, but on the other hand, you've got a lot of complicated things, a whole lot. Uh, this one, for example, is got another adjustment for resonance. And man, you just do not touch that kind of stuff, unless you're a master watchmaker. Okay, and we're, I'm not a master watchmaker. I'm a pretentious watchmaker, which is <laughs> a lot different. Okay, so on uh, on Sunday, we'll put on the dial, put on the hands, finish up our watch. Hope to see you then. And by the way, uh, this is an opportunity to subscribe. And if you're interested in making watches, uh, we set up a Facebook site called 
pretentious watchmakers, okay? And then the, we have it in French, of course, which is even more pretentious for somebody, especially for someone like me, whose pronunciation of French is, uh, <laughs> needs work. Okay, uh, so hope to see you on Sunday. And uh, if you want to subscribe, this is a great opportunity. And until then, this is Bill Sanders for Watch Art Side, the art and science of watch collection.